Mike, are you there? Okay, we are now recording and we are now live on Channel 9. And here's Robert. And, uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, Beth, would you like to screen share? Yes. Thank Stand you. by. As soon as. Yeah. Okay. So we have, I, I will call for a roll call once we get started here. Um, and so Robert is there? Yes. Robert's there in here. We're not online yet, though. Oh, we are. Okay. Did, I'm sorry. Did Hartley give me the go-ahead? Yes. He, uh, we're live on Channel 9. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, Laurie. We are live and we are now recording. Okay. I apologize, everyone, for any confusion on that. My name is Laura Schifrin, and I chair the planning board uh, for Townsend, and I'm calling the meeting to order of February 12th, 2024, at 6.38 p.m. Sorry for the delay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Robert Therian here. Carol Hoffs is present. Mike Barosco, present. Okay. And Laura Schifrin, present. So two of us are on Zoom and two of us are in the meeting room. I would like to uh, now pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me and I want to thank all of our veterans and all of our military and first responders that are serving us today. Uh, we are being recorded and uh, the meeting will appear on YouTube channel. Uh, 1.4, Chairman's additions or deletions. I believe everything was added to the revised agenda and I don't have anything else at this point. Uh, 1.5, review and approve meeting minutes for January 8th, 2024, and January 22nd, 2024. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for January 8th, 2024, and January 22nd, 2024. I second that motion. Is there any further discussion, additions, or uh, deletions or corrections. I know we have some uh, edits from the first time around, but um, those are we the, the ones in the portal now are the updated ones. Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote to approve the minutes of January eighth, twenty twenty four, and January twenty second, twenty twenty four. Carol Hoffs, yes. Robert Theron, yes. Mike Michael? Barosco, I'm going to abstain. I just haven't read them yet. Okay. Laura Schifrin, yes. Okay. Thank you so much on that. Now we have, we are at 640. We have a 640 A&R. Mm -hmm. um, I'll screen share that. Okay. Is, is there a presenter? Yes. Okay. Uh, no. mm -hmm. Sure. Have a seat. Yeah. Get this on the screen. My name is Steve Ballard from Haley Ward, and we have an AR plan on 27 Bayberry Hill. It is, I represent Virginia Wells. She's the owner of the property. It's currently a single lot that we are subdividing into three lots. Any questions from the board? It's a single lot, you're making three, correct. See any problem with that? Meets all our 
requirements. I had looked at it earlier today. Oh, you saw it? Yeah, I saw it. Oh. I sat today and went through all the paperwork, so I had looked at it. Yeah, I'm good with it. Okay. Michael, any questions? Nope, I have no questions. And Beth, how many signatures do you need for the plan? Um, I think three would be fine, right? I mean, uh, I know that you won't be back for a bit. So if uh, Mike votes on it and approves, you know, he can come and sign. But you would have to appoint him as a full voting member because he's an associate. Oh, I should have appointed him anyway. You, you can do that. Um, yeah, before we take a vote, I would like to appoint, um, because we have a quorum, but for this A&R lot and for a vote, we need to have four members voting, I believe. Is that not correct? No, you, you, no? you can all vote. I'm, I'm just... Okay, but in order for him to sign... Yeah, signing. Yes. You, you have to sign in person, and I know you won't be back. So if Michael, Carol, and, I, and Robert vote, they can sign it, and he can take the mylar tonight. Right. Okay. So um, what I'd like to do as chairman is to appoint our associate member, Michael Vrasco, as a voting member at tonight's meeting. Um. Having said that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Mylar and um, Robert, Carol, and Michael can sign it. Carol, oh. okay. you're signed. Hmm? You're yes. going to make a motion? Are we going to make a motion? <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion to approve the Mylar. And we the ANR? Yeah, you want to approve the ANR. <laughs> you want to approve the ANR for 27 Bayberry Hill Road. I second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll take the roll call vote. Carol Hoffs is yes. Robert Therrien, yes. Mike Barrasco, yes. And Laura Schifrin, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Welsh. Or, I'm sorry, you're not, you're, I, I got your name wrong, but it's on Ginny Welsh's property. We have a pen for you. We have a special pen for this. Michael will have to come in and sign, though. Okay, so yeah, we, that's true. All right, so I guess we'll we will have to pick it up <laughs> as soon as we get Michael. This will work. Okay. Have to Michael, can you get with Beth with the time? I'll get the other pen. Right. Yeah, I should be able to swing in tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Um, Oh, you want to do open tomorrow because the school's closed. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. That's right. It'll be Wednesday. Probably. Okay. I can sign it Wednesday then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So it's probably going to be Wednesday due to the weather. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> yeah, kids. I was going to say. Not as bad as they said. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, so we have a few minutes before the appointment of 650, unless. Um, He's here. <laughs> Ron's here. Okay, Ron is there, and is Michael Brown with him? He's on the agenda. They signed in uh, online. They come online. I, I thought he was going to. You do. Good. How are you? Oh, great. I'm Ron Montgomery, and I have been on the Energy Committee since uh, 2016. And uh, we're, uh, we started off with five people when I joined. We're down to basically two active people right now. Wow. Um, we'd love to find, fill in those other spots. Um, but four, four or five years ago, I think the, uh, it was when the uh, select board requested that we uh, make a part of the uh, presenter. This might be my turn. Here we go. There he is. Hey, come on over. I'll start <laughs> over. Yeah. Yeah. You are, they, they, I think oh, the, yeah. some of these folks may already know this. Yeah. Oh. 
This okay. is the uh, goals. I just, I'm just wondering um, what you oh, okay. handed out. Right. Okay. If, if I may. Um, yes, you can, you can screen share. I have a copy of what you sent over. Okay. And um, I'll just read this into the record. Um, I, I want to thank uh, Ron and uh, Michael, if you don't mind me calling you by your first names, for coming this evening. I did see your presentation at the Board of Selectmen's meeting, and um, I was very impressed by it. And as it is, um, or could be, a very good offshoot for to be amended into our master plan. So that's why you're here tonight, because the planning board is the um, board that approves the master plan for the town. So as an introduction, I'm going to read um, Ron's email and into the record. The following is the approximate statement we will make on our approach is what you're doing this evening, if, if I may because you were going to make this statement anyway. Is that all right if I read this, Beth? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I probably edited that after that or something, but anyway, go ahead. Okay, all right. Um, uh, we have taken a goals-driven approach uh, curated and endorsed by Ed Herman, subcommittee chair, after extensive research of the energy subject in master plans of other small nearby towns. Ed. Mm -hmm. Since resigned, the approach encourages each stakeholder group to directly engage applying the town's energy goals in their section of the master plan. We believe this will produce better results more quickly than our original 2021 process. The intent of the, of the Townsend... I think Townsend I said, Energy Committee, made, that's my abbreviation. I, yeah, um, suggested goals list is to serve as an addendum to the master plan that will guide departments, committees, and boards in their development of their specialized specialist section of the master plan, and that will guide our actual conduct upon final review of the town's master plan. And that was done by Ron. And I really, I, so now I'm gonna let you take over and um, just want you to know that I think you did a great job Thank you. Um, the, we had a, uh, uh, the original request came to us around uh, probably before the pandemic. And um, the, uh, a document was approved by the Board of Selectmen that described a process that, we, that, that our uh, leader had come up with at the time. And uh, we took quite, quite a bit of time with that uh, because there was always questions in our minds to whether we could get enough volunteers. The original plan involved having each uh, having each of the boards and uh, committees and departments have an, have a volunteer coming together with an, an, with a couple of volunteers from the energy department to energy uh, committee to to develop a master plan section in the energy for the energy committee. Um, we were always having trouble. Coming up with a, with a, uh, always a, to us, it was always going to be a problem getting volunteers together to the magnitude that that committee was going to have. It was like nine to 12 people that you had to get together in meetings. And there's difficulty doing that. And people aren't going to necessarily learn what they need to learn to bring back to their committee. Um, we had a lot of problems with that. But uh, and then I had difficulty getting a volunteer. <laughs> I couldn't be both chair of this committee and, and do that. That was my criteria at the time. So uh, we did, Ed did volunteer. And uh, I think he uh, may have uh, stepped forward because I, I mentioned to him, we're not reinventing the wheel here. Other towns have been through this before. So why don't you go take a look and see what they do, did. And he did that. He actually went out and, and uh, studied, uh, you know, Pepperell, Shirley, Air, you know, a whole bunch of local uh, towns around here and uh, got to know uh, that very few of them have, uh, well, none of them really had a, a, a separate energy section, but were rather guided by a set of goals. And uh, 
So then the next thing was was that we did we all decided that would work well because as we as I said in the statement, uh, instead of having uh, people you know come together and then break apart to their groups, the groups total the whole group uh, whether it be the um, the planning board or the, the, um, or the or one of the one of the departments. Um, they can get together with their managers and and decide what are the most important goals to them based on a guiding list. Um, we had originally thought the list that uh, Shirley came up with was pretty good, but I kept scratching my head over that one. I, I said, this, this looks like this is old. This is not current. And uh, so we uh, took some time and... Uh, uh, tried to see what other people were doing. And uh, the, the really leading thing for me was what the uh, Green Communities Grant Program is doing. And that is uh, they're, they're headed definitely to carb carbonization and electrification, which is sometimes those are tough grasp, thing, tough concepts to grasp, but we tried to explain is, with as few words as we could what they were when we wrote our goals. And the, uh, the list of goals itself is uh, something we have already worked quite a bit on, but I think there may still be uh, contributions to be made from by, as the individual departments and groups see it. Um, I have looked at the, at the master plan the way it is. There are mentions, there are places where energy comes up. But uh, what we're looking at uh, here for, for goals and, and going into the future is a, is a really quite different way of, of uh, heating our homes and uh, 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 trying to reduce uh, carbon emissions. Um, I had originally started, you know, when I left a job uh, in the en in energy uh, uh, building science um, back in 2016, um, I got a, a, a tax bill that was quite a bit higher than it had been. And I said, geez, there's got to be something I can do about this. And I volunteered to get on the Energy Committee. Um, but it's pretty obvious that uh, the, 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 the whole thrust, and, and the public is becoming more aware of this now, is, is climate change. We've got to do something. Everybody's got to do their part. And that's what this is trying to guide the town towards. That's, that's what we're doing. Questions from the board, please. Um, so what are you expecting from us? Well, the, we when we uh, originally did this, we had it in mind, and the original plan that we presented to the Board of Selectmen um, had a, a quite formal set of events listed that, that we're going to try to develop a master plan and um, and work like that. But this is different. This is we don't we don't even know whether you're acceptable, whether the concept of a set of goals working as a guide <coughs> rather than having a separate well the, the the goals is the energy input to the to the master plan, you know. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's no other way to put it. We have uh, quite a few resources available to us within the, um, that, that you probably don't know about, I'd like to make you aware of, within the uh, Green Communities Grant Program, where we have, we have uh, developed over $700,000 worth of grants for the town. We are saving, I would say, uh, quite a bit of money. We, I can't name a number because the, software that we have is not oriented to giving us a savings number it's oriented to giving us emission savings and energy and fuel savings um but the green communities grant program has a uh has a database where all the energy bills developed in towns and all the energy bills taxpayers pay for uh including schools and even the water company uh, are all grouped together and every energy use by this this group is input into the software and this has been this has been monthly done monthly since 2010 
We have quite a database now that says what our energy consumption is. The software can make uh, weather adjusted estimates as to uh, whether the uh, usage of fuel is related to the weather, you know, the temperatures, or whether it's related to our actual consumption. And um, that database is, is where we keep track of, of the emissions. Now, what do we want from the planning board? We'd like to know that that, that part, uh, the, the proposal to, to work from a set of goals is acceptable. That is something that you would do. And from here on, we're wondering what the process is because we don't have, we've abandoned the old process, which involved getting people together and having tons of meetings and, and uh, then spreading apart and talking to the, to the different committees and groups. Um, instead, now, uh, if the planning board would endorse the, uh, the concept, um, the goals would be provided to the different groups, you know, the, the police chief, the fire chief, the, the uh, um, uh, chair of uh, certain of, of the committees. And uh, with the question, you know, please, please, how can you integrate some of these goals into your section of the master plan? And each group knows what their budgets are and consumption is of fuel and and uh, what their responsibilities are. If they have questions, they can certainly ask the energy committee to come join them. Or if they see a goal, they come up with a goal that we didn't think of. Not, I think, I suppose that's possible. <laughs> but, I, yeah, so I guess what could the plan, what was expressed to us was that the, the, <clears throat> the master plan is the domain of this board. So I guess. In my mind, the question is, first of all, with regard to energy, do you agree with these goals or can they be improved or anything added or can they be better expressed? That's kind of one thing. And does it make sense that this, in whatever form it ends up, would become part of Townsend's master plan? I mean, maybe that's kind of going back um, to it. Teresa Morse, who is our, um, our liaison with the, yes. with the board. Mm -hmm. uh, suggested that there was already a process in place. If we submit the goals and the, and the concept of using the goals as our contribution to the master plan, obviously there's more discussion to go on. But if, if that's considered to be our, our, our contribution, then you've got a process to go beyond that. You send it to, like I, I could I could go further because I did at one time try to develop processes behind this plan rather than the one that we had before um but teresa said don't 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 go any further with that because the planning board will have you know the process of, of how to proceed from here well the concept that, that i heard at the board of seconds meeting and that i'm seeing here and i just wonder if you wouldn't mind taking um some of the statements made here, you've got uh, 11 statements um, and going through the, your thoughts on each one and where we would put it. Now, uh, bringing all the department heads involved, not that they, they don't already have enough work to do, but, um, oh, thank you, Beth, for putting that up. Um, what, I, what I see is there's, a little bit of. Well, you don't have that. I have a copy of that for you. Go ahead. You, would like, you got it. You got it. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Oh, yeah, it's on the it should Thank be you. on your screen. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but some of it, like you know, that the board of selectmen, the town, is already working with um, the some electric companies for. Re reduction in rates and offering, possibly offering, I don't think they're out yet, but they've had the presentations of way where they've offered where you could join to get um, your kilowatts or whatever for a lesser rate than what Unitel is doing because we're Unitel here and you all know what your bills are like. Um, mm -hmm. uh, some may say they're worth, much worse than our taxes, but um, 
So in each of these, perhaps you could tell the board uh, what department would fit better into what, or um, do you feel that all of your statements fit in with all the departments? I mean, we have the, we're working on some green community stuff, and like I said, and some um, of the reduction or try to get, we're probably looking at more solar because um, it's alternative to electric um, uses that you're looking for. So when, why don't you do discuss these and then the board can ask you some questions on that? Because from this, we would actually keep you, I think, um, I can have the Beth explain the process better, but keep you as the committee. You can also have meetings with, whether it be to all the boards at one time, boards and departments at one time, or whether you take them separately or just in small groups, because there would be a lot, obviously, to try to get their input for final verbiage to be amended to the master plan. I see this as, as a step forward for us to make some tweaks and guidance in the master plan that's more understandable to the department heads. Okay, so now I've, I've said my piece, so I think I'll let you do yours. My, my own answer to whether it goes to one, those, whether individual pieces go to one or another is no. It's a whole set of goals and they work together. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and we're not really after just the department, you know, we're after every individual. We all have to start thinking about, you know, the carbon we're producing when we when we run the car, and, you know, we, we let it run in the driveway long. You know, it's, it's all that. It's all of that. It's it's a different way of thinking about, you know, using energy. And, and I knock myself the side of the head because uh, I, you know, sometimes catch myself running the water while I brush my teeth. You don't have to run the water. You, you don't have to. But water is actually one of the most expensive electrical items that we have here in town. It, it, it takes a lot of electricity to pull that water out of the ground. Yep. So we don't even think about it, but, but that's the kind of education and, and, and the depth. People have to think about that while they're while brushing their teeth. It's, it's gonna come down to that, but there's obviously very large way and visible ways other than you know the brushing of teeth, turning the water <laughs> off, that we can save energy. Um, and also, I would uh, want to emphasize that there is some urgency to it because there's a tendency to, you know, try to put things off. Or not. there are some people who are very eager to save energy because they want to save money. The fact is that when you use less energy, you're also reducing emissions. You know, and we go to electricity, then we can reduce the emissions because we can use renewables when it comes to electricity. Um, well, some of what you said, which is, let's just take an example of brushing your teeth and the water's running. That starts should be starting when the kids are two or three years old. It yes, definitely it, should it, be taught. It, it, That's something for life's learning in kindergarten. Yes. Uh, perhaps not some of the other stuff they're teaching, but certainly how, how you live in life should be taught then. So there, I don't know where we have any control over the school committees and what they educate people of. <clears throat> well, we, we educate uh, the public. That is gonna be a responsibility. I mean, we, we, we can, you know, have educational sessions or, or uh, um, sponsor things where we, we get people to sign up for Mass Save and, and that sort of thing, but, um, it is a, uh, a, a little bit, it's not problematic, I don't think, because I think the schools are probably on top of that and trying to educate kids about, you know, using less energy. But I, I can only hope that because <laughs> I'm not there. We, do, we are, by the way, responsible for, and we have some controls over the, um, over the, uh, uh, 
use of, um, of uh, green communities funds at the schools. We're, we're uh, gradually getting all the schools taken care of because the, the, the school, we're not, re we're not responsible for the high school, unfortunately. We have no visibility to what's going on there. But uh, the, the towns and schools, uh, Hoffman Brook and uh, Spalding, are things where, where we can make, make improvements. We, we just don't have any uh, contact with the curriculum or, uh, or that sort of thing. But we could certainly do a lot by being working closer with the schools, if that were possible. It, there's, a, there's a pretty strong separation, you know, that, yeah. that, that this occurs due to budgets and stuff. But really, we're, we're dealing with the, the kids and the adults Separately, I guess. <laughs> Just, to them. Just want to make a comment on the water department and energy saving. Whatever they've done recently with the water, they they can monitor your water usage. And I actually got a call from the water department telling me that there is a leak in my house. Huh. And um, and they told me how many gallons was leaking <laughs> per hour. And I found it was one of my toilets. <clears throat> so I was, um, I was, I was cool. very. Um, I mean, I that's that a good was, practice. I thought yeah. that was really. Uh, yeah, I thought that was really yeah, a, a good thing. <clears throat> yeah, that comes with the new meters that they installed. They've yeah, been over a paper number paper. of years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because, because I came from a place where I had well water for twenty years, and now I have to pay a water bill. It's like holy cow! The, the <laughs> very first couple of years that we were taking part in the in the Green Communities program, there were enormous savings, and we really hadn't gotten going as far as the public buildings are concerned. That was savings at the water department. The water department got right into it, and. A good chunk of our savings that we've had every year since has been because the water department used yes, the use electricity, and they and they solarize some of their uh, some of the electricity too. I'll yeah. just add, um, you know, I'm kind of was rereading this list of goals. So it seems to me that maybe the first three are really directly, you know, here's how energy could be saved, and I think those would apply to just about anybody, any department or any individual resident, you know, number one being be more efficient, you know, prevent losses of heat from a building and, and so on. And then and decarbonization, I actually keep thinking decarbonization and electrification are somewhat the same, maybe, maybe there's a distinction, but in any case, um, yeah, you know, substituting the burning of fossil fuels for, for example, using electricity to heat. Now, of course, electricity itself comes may come from fossil fuels, but even in that situation, it's typically more efficient. But electric heat, electric heat is wicked expensive. Electric heat is expensive. Yes. It's very expensive. We just heat is efficient. <laughs> it's very, very expensive. Anytime you want to put a toaster under a bucket of water, it's going to be expensive. <laughs> right. Um, um, but, you know, I mean, the basic lesson is use less energy. That's that's the efficiency part. And then, you know, reduce the use of reduce the use of fossil fuels. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate. The in, in, in detail, you, you, you could probably take a, a, a few items and pull it out of the, the view of uh, the, the uh, fire department because he doesn't necessarily want to do you know, one or two. It isn't involved in one or two things <clears throat> that are here. But ultimately, if one of those things is educate the public, well, it's educating his firefighters. I mean, that's that's his public, and educating them to uh, to, to to not run the engine on that fire engine unnecessarily is a lesson. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, we apparently had a lot of snow, and the. Um, Information that I got was that our emissions actually increased that year. The town, whole towns increased that year. And it turned out it was because they had to use the trucks had to plow more snow. They used a lot more diesel. And that affected the, the whole town's emission savings by about 25% of our, our savings were gone that year. And they came back. But it's uh, that that kind of detail, it's it's a fragile progress, and if we don't make a lot of pro 
make progress constantly and so with some urgency it'll be difficult to reach our goals but i think i think our, our goals are achievable so beth what do you think the process is i mean obviously um we could come up with some verbiage that gets this um related to the master plan and then Whatever we do, we always have a public hearing for uh, town input. So, uh, uh, there was no public hearing for the master plan. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I mean, this can be appended to the master plan if the planning board would like to do that. Mm. That's perfectly fine. You review it and it's very general. Um, so, yeah, it can be appended just as we did with the. Um, the goals of the housing production plan. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yes. that was done after it was approved. So we can well, add the, this. That's, that's true. And the housing plan did have uh, public hearings. There were a few well, public well, hearings. Well, I, the plan meetings. itself did, yeah. The yes. goals, though. The goals yes. are what we extracted. Right. Um, so that's what they're saying here. And if you, you know, we could certainly amend or append this to the master plan and then reapprove it if you want. But I would take some time, you know, and familiar, you know, become familiar with it. I, I would suspect that, that, you know, maybe the police chief wants to meet with us and discuss this relative to his department, you know, and uh, his questions in, in up front. He seemed that the police chief has actually been in contact with me several times about, you know, what he can do. But um, his okay. his questions you know, will be related to the police department, and you know, wondering what uh, grants and so forth are available because we don't have a grant administrator working on this stuff, yeah. uh, as far as I know. So yeah, that, unfortunately, that's part of my report. Our housing and grant administrator is has um, given her notice, so she'll be moving on. So. <laughs> I'd like to thank that was her. somebody we just got. Yeah, so we just had to publicly thank her and wish her well. But yes, um, that unfortunately is the case. The other thing I was going to add while we're on the discussion as part of my report is that the land use staff is going to be reviewing the master plan during the month of February. And during that review, um, we are going to look at the implementation of the plan and divvy up the focus areas and the goals. Um, so I think integrating the towns and energy goals would, you know, just fall right into the process. We also okay. had the goals of the MVP plan that are part of, they're already part of the master plan, but um, we'll be doing some work in land use to, to review all of the plans and get a master, you know, we will divvy up the goals. So, and the planning board quite a bit. Yes, so I'm sure. collaborating and other things. So. Okay. So it's a great time, you know, to append this. Let's do this. Yeah. yeah. So I leave it up to the board to um, I'll entertain a motion that we move we as the planning board move forward with the suggestions of the energy commission, energy committee and uh, their goals and um, I just had a question on number nine. What what is a non-utility electricity source? What would that be? Non-utility electric source. Number nine is yes. uh, should develop non-utility electricity sources. So when you put uh, uh, Townsend um, would develop its own electric uh, fields. You could, you could like put solar. Up, uh, you could oh, put up solar. solar. You could put you could put up solar in the backyard here. Oh yeah, could, like all those big solar could, things yeah. over by the apartment complex. It looks yep. like up, um, <laughs> okay. um, I don't know. We build a build a dam and, and generate electricity in the river. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. well, over no no one would object to that, right? <laughs> I said that last time. <laughs> I was going to say right now you could yeah. because it's flowing. It's going yeah. over that dam over yeah. Harbor Village. Yeah. It's flowing really. I, I'd like right. to make a couple of comments here. Um, okay, Robert. Um, I'm very involved with this in my industry, in my profession. And um, 
I'm wise enough to know that there's no perfect answer for anything. <laughs> and these are all social needs that we have to look at and address and pay attention to. But I am very reluctant to commit to any one particular solution. Okay. And in that commentary, one of the things I wanted to bring up to this board in reviewing our zone or zoning bylaw is that we have in our bylaw solar um, fields. So initially, they were a great concept and everybody rallied for it. Uh, first of all, um, there's a lot to know about that now and with solar collectors now that we didn't know before. And so, um, and in my profession, all this new building code, which is all energy driven and climate related, has taken priority over public safety in buildings. So what I'm concerned about is when there's a buzzword, everybody jumps on that bandwagon and focus on a specific topic without paying attention to peripheral issues and concerns, okay? And I'm finding that to be very scary. Um, and this new building code that public's not aware of, Massachusetts doesn't create it. It's created by a private entity and presented to our legislature, okay? Yes. So the building code is 12 volumes of documents. I do not know everything in the building code. I have to look at it for what, just the way we do when we have to check our zoning or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me, this is what happens. They go to the legislature every three to five years with a new building code. That's a politician. You're giving a guy a document that's 12 volumes long to approve. Now, if I'm that politician, A, I know nothing about the building industry or very little. I have this enormous document to look at. And then if I question it or say, I'm not sure, they turn around and say to you, what, are you against public safety? What politician wants that out, okay? So this has gotten out of control. Massachusetts has not had its own building code since the year 2000. And this is going on right now, this new building code, if I told you what's coming down, you'd be, you, it's like not believable. And it's totally handicapping me as a professional because now I have laws governing everything. And um, Robert, so, for, so Robert. for example, just in town, we have the solar array fields. Mm -hmm. Most of those solar collectors are archaic and outdated. You can't replace them because the parts are not available. There's new technology. They were provided there because the government subsidized them. We had to wipe out all this vegetation to put them in there. Um, so it seems hypocritical to wipe out virgin land to put something like this in. And really what you're looking at is an industrial complex. Okay, so it's really industry. So what happens to these solar panels when they're no longer useful? So doesn't that affect the environment? Right. Well, sure. I mean, every, everything has a, a footprint. Everything involves some waste at some point in its life cycle. I, I think it's so really... So what, what's more harmful, a lithium battery or a car engine? I mean, you, you got to think honestly, about... Honestly, 
I'll just hazard a guess. I think a car engine is more is more harmful. Well, yeah, uh, lithium battery is toxic. And, and yeah, yeah, it's toxic. Can, in, 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 in how, how many years of toxicity? I mean, there's a whole field called life cycle analysis. And yeah, I'm not an it, expert. It, in, and in, in how but, toxic is this last forever? It, so, it I, as far as presenting goals from the town. I think that's smart and yeah. it's the right thing to do. It says we're paying attention to it. <laughs> but I'll tell you personally, I really think the industry can produce more things that people need than the government here. And um, but you could look at it this way, they're goals. They're yes. Not- I don't think there's any intent, I don't think there's anything so specific, you know, like <laughs> that, you're talking about that we're, so, uh, we're mandating a no, particular no, th- th- thing. Th- so, th- I mean, to make a statement about what <clears throat> town's about and what we're interested in and what we're trying to achieve does not bother me at all. Yeah, because so. like everybody else, I would support the same things, okay? Yeah. Uh, it's just when we are implementing them, and yes. putting them into zoning districts and all this other stuff that you really got to make not only an immediate but, review, but project long-term of yeah. what might be needed in the future. What, what the unintended consequences are. Of right, exactly. But as far as adopting these goals, I don't see a problem adopting well, the goals. I, I, I have a wrong. problem with the electrification thing. Which one was that? Right, well. What number? Not Number three. Number three. Um. Yes, it specifically really says electrical options. It does say no. whenever, whenever possible. Yeah. Whenever, whenever possible. possible. Um, yeah. Whatever options, whether they're electrical or not. You know, I mean, that's opening the door for what? other alternatives. I don't know, whatever electrical right. options so, are. What- um, so okay. And- okay, everybody, can I just bring us all back together here and right to the point? And the point being, and I heard it from both of you now, was that we agree with the goals. We may not agree with the verbiage. We have land use going to be look at, looking at different things in the master plan and sections. These will be considered with your permission. And at our March meeting, one of the meetings, we'll get a report from Beth on what we can discuss of what goes where. I don't think we're going to end up in the master plan dictating a specific way to go, but certainly letting them know that the concerns are here for the future and that we recognize things have to be done. We may not know at this minute what it is that's going to be done, but that we should all be recognizing that things need to be done, as as was stated uh, by Ron, I believe. You know, each department head will have a different way of addressing these goals with, and I, I think he's right, the primary thing is education, because there's some things that can be done without spending a penny or having it cost you anything. So if you feel like I have just summed up what um, our presenters have presented to us tonight, because now we're like 40 minutes into this. Um, I, I would like to move on and let them know that we um, are appreciative of their goals. We agree with them and we'll find a way to get them put into the master plan. If we think of anything else, we'll let you know. And if you come up with other ideas, I mean, other ways to, you know, electrification is a term that has been out there. And, you know, we, we people are trying to develop uh, new ways to develop electricity uh, as well. So someday we may well have nuclear fission under this hood. No, no. no. I agree. And I think that's just <laughs> And I think the thing is, the technology is changing so rapidly. Um, and so, in a way, for any agency to commit to a specific approach 
is almost restricting other approaches, other resources, and other opportunities that might come from the industry itself. But you also have to take into consideration when you're doing whatever is available at that point in time mm. is what you're, I think, you know, that's what's available. I mean, I'm waiting for when if they're going to put a solar panel on the top of a car so I don't have to plug it in. Mm, right. I totally agree with uh, looking at every town department and evaluating what the consumption is and what other ways can be done to reduce it or improve it. Um, but I, I can give you a classic story. I d designed a school with all high-tech HVAC equipment. So you go to a new school now or even in this room, you leave it empty for a while and the lights are off. So I had all kinds of high-tech technology. In the school, we have makeup air, for fresh air for the all this stuff. So, got a phone call from the school department. The kids are sick in school, and they're trying to relate it to the, the performance of the architecture. Well, what was discovered, everything that was done in this high-tech HVAC system, an individual from the private community went to the controller controls all the money in the school budget and told him he would guarantee would save them 30% on their fuel consumption. And that turned into several millions of dollars. Okay, Robert. I, I... Let me finish. Uh, so what happened is they dismantled all the fresh air intake which reduced the energy to heat and cool the school. So it's lessons like this that we learn from. And, um, and I'm sorry if I took too much time to tell you that, but um, so this, all this stuff has to be carefully done. I support this the way you uh, endorsed it, uh, Laura, with the exception of some of the verbiage. Um, and and we will have a, a time to discuss this. I would like to hear what uh, land use has to bring back to us with the process, okay? So do we need a motion to approve this or something? No. 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 Okay. I don't think so. We have, we certainly are all in consensus with moving forward um, and um, getting more information on it. And certainly we appreciate all the hard work that you gentlemen have done for, for years now. Um, mm -hmm. Put this together and appreciate your attendance this evening and we're, we're not necessarily done if you tell us this okay else. well i was just about to say okay. the same thing <laughs> all right you will, thank you you thank will you. hear thank from you. us okay thank you so all much right. appreciate it thanks thank you all okay, thank you um we're moving on next to the work session i'm going to go over this quickly because on some of this, I really would prefer to have a full board, um, but also on 3.1, 3.2, 3 3.3, um, we're doing public hearings on those. Yeah, and they're all, um, actually all of those items are in the town council's review bin, except okay. for, um, except for the, um 17513 which was the definitive subdivisions and you all have had a chance to review that um i would like to say that uh, i would like to ask if it's all right if we do the public hearing for the regs on the same night as the public hearing for the zoning bylaw the new zoning bylaw proposal or is that too much i mean we have it set for April 1st. Okay, no, I'd like to see them all on that. The whole thing on the whole night. Okay, because um, the other thing was the bylaw review committee is going to also be adding some um, amendments and no new ones though, no new zoning bylaws, no. but they will be adding amended bylaws. But that's when will we have that? April 1st. 
if that works. I know I had yeah, mentioned that'll these. be great. Yep. Okay. Yep. So great. It will be a long night potentially, but you can yeah. put everything right on there. And um, as far as the bylaw review committee, there should only be there's only like a couple, and they're very yeah, very it's minor. Not, not but, anything of yeah a lot of discussion or yeah. The big one will be the uh, multifamily uh, overlay district for MBTA communities, yeah. which is yeah. still also in town. Yeah, but that's not going up to this town meeting, is it? Springtown meeting. Springtown meeting. Yeah. So there's another update. The, the warrant will close, as we discussed in the other meeting, on March 1st. So as far as placeholders um, and warrant articles, the board will have to, you know, finalize that um, at the next meeting. I believe we want a placeholder for everything that's in our work session tonight. Yep. We can always amend it yep. prior okay. to, but I would rather have that all, yep. that we have a place saved for it. Uh, when is, I should ask, when is the meeting? So uh, the next planning board meeting or the public hearing? Town meeting, Town meeting is May 7th. Is when? May 7th. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll sure. okay. okay. Yep. And so... So we have to make a presentation at that time meeting. Um, or so. the well for the the bylaw changes. You make a recommendation on the multifamily overlay district oh. bylaw we that do. you'll do before town meeting. You'll do that. At, yeah. So you'll hold the public hearing. We'll finalize the bylaw. You'll hold the public hearing. You'll take input. It's all going through town council so right. as this goes along. That's not okay. much time. Well, mm. this is this is not new. This is rolling. This isn't new. We've been talking about it for a year. I know. <laughs> would you? Okay. Would you like all right. to? Okay. Well, then that just be prepared for a long meeting on April first. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, so if it pleases the board, the board, I'm going to go to uh, correspondence and um, uh, that'll be you, Beth, uh, for your updates and reports and any announcements and communications. And uh, yeah, okay, and then I'll go into the next meeting. It's not on here, but I'll go into that um, after you're done with your administrative report. Do you want me to do the, uh, the announcements? Okay, this is the Town of Ashby, the Planning Board, Notice of Decision, Special Permit, West State Road, Map 7, Parcel 21.3. The decision of the board is to approve the special permit with conditions for a driveway with greater than a 12% grade at Map 7, Parcel 21.3. Decision is filed with the town clerk on Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. Do I have to read all the appeals? Is this the right to appeal? Do I have to read all this? No, you don't have to read that. Okay. Just the general. Just the general. Skim it. Okay. I like to know what the decisions are. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, what, right. what they did get to allow or not allow. I think that's pertinent for us to know that, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I said that this yep. is to approve that permit. So okay. the town of Groton notice of decision, special permit, town center overlay district in site plan review, PB number 2023-1625 Station Avenue. Notice is hereby given that the Groton Planning Board voted to grant a special permit pursuant to the code of the town of Groton, chapter 218 zoning. Sections 218-2.3 special permits and 218-7.3 town center overlay district to uh, the applicant is CJS Workshop LLC 31 Adams Avenue, Broughton, Mass. Uh, property owner, the Rail Trail Holding Company, and the property location is 25 Station Avenue. Oh, the proposed project is to reuse the property for offices, logistics, and storage. The planning board also approved the site plan for the project. 
the decisions on file with the town clerk. I wonder if that's the station restaurant. If that was because I I guess the station restaurant closed. I wonder if that's the oh, building. Right. Oh, hopefully they'll have some success with what they want to change it to. Yeah. That's it. Uh, no, nope, I got to keep going here. Oh. Okay. Um, Office of the Select Board, Towns in Massachusetts, Town, town or Towns in Flag Policy. Purpose, this policy provides guidelines for the towns flying or presenting on Town of Towns and Owned Properties, the flag of the United States of America, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as well as any other flags deemed appropriate by the town for parades, holidays, other events and celebrations. The choice by the town of which flag to raise on town-owned property is hereby declared to be government speech, communicating a message to the public to which the strictures of the First Amendment do not apply. The pre town presently does not, nor does it intend to designate the flying of flags on town-owned town -owned properties as a public forum by permitting a non-governmental party to raise a particular flag. Accordingly, it is the town's choice, acting by and through the select board, of whether to raise or decline to raise a flag on town-owned properties. The manner in which such a decision is made and the adoption of this policy should not be interpreted as designating any town-owned properties as a public forum for flying of flags. Policy number one, the select board of the town administrator as its designee shall ensure the proper execution of this policy as it may be amended in the future by the select board at its sole discretion. Number two, the flying or presentation of flags other than the ones stated above, such as ceremonial flags, are not intended to create or serve as a forum for free expression by the public as stated above. And number three, nothing in this policy shall be constructed to restrict or in any way limit the display of flags displayed on privately held cemetery plots consistent with cemetery regulations. And approved 1-9-2024. Okay. Um, this is from the Office of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Towns and Mass. This notice of decision, Zoning Board of Appeals request for a special permit. Notice is hereby granted that a special permit under town, Towns and Zoning Bylaws Section 145-36 and 145-65 has been granted to John Arupo for a renewal of an accessory apartment in a residential district. Property is located at 23 Shirley Road. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals, Towns and Mass. Notice of decision. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals requests a special permit. Notice hereby given that a special permit under Townsend Voting Bylaws 145-36 and 145-65 has been granted to Derek London, <coughs> a renewal of an accessory apartment in a residential district, property located at 99 Clement Road. Zoning Board of Appeals, Townsend Mass. Notice of decision. Zoning Board of Appeals request for special permit. Notice is hereby given that a special permit under Townsend Zoning Bylaws Section 145-36 and 145-65 has been granted to Jason Cowan a renewal of an accessory apartment in, in a residential district property located at 355 Main Street. Okay. Town of Townsend Conservation Commission legal notice pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Townsend Wetlands Bylaw, the Townsend Conservation Commission will hold a work session on Wednesday, February 14, 2024, during the 8.30 p.m. meeting. The work session will be held virtually via Zoom meeting and in person at Town Hall on a, on a request for determination of app applicability filed with the Conservation Commission by Town of Townsend. The right-of-way section is located from 80 Main Street to the intersection of South Street and Main Street. The proposed project is for the construction of sidewalk to connect this Wanaka Rail, River Rail Trail and other existing sidewalk under Mass Trails Grant from 80 Main Street to the intersection of South Street Main Street to tie into the existing sidewalk. 
the work will cross over a culvert crossing in through riverfront area in BLSF. Parties wishing to speak in support of or in opposition to this application may do so at the meeting or in writing prior to the meeting. Uh, Town of Townsend Conservation Commission legal notice pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Townsend Wetlands Bylaw. The Townsend Conservation Committee Commission will hold a work session on Wednesday, February 14, 2024, during the 7:40 p.m. meeting. The work session will be held virtually via Zoom meeting and in person at Town Hall on a request for determination of applicability filed with the Conservation Commission by Nashua River Watershed Association. The property is located at 42 and 22 West Meadow Road, Assessor's Map 4, Parcel 16, and Assessor's Map 4, Parcel 15. The proposed project is to plant around 325 native bare root tree or shrub seedlings along Lock Brook, which runs through two abutting properties located at 42 West Meadow and 22 West Meadow Road. All work will take place within 200 feet of Lock Brook. Parties wishing to speak in support of or in opposition to this application may do so at the meeting or in writing prior to the meeting. Town of Townsend Conservation Commission legal notice Pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Townsend Wetlands Bylaw, the Townsend Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, February 14, 2024, at approximately 8.10 p.m. The hearing will be held virtually via Zoom meeting in in-person town hall on a notice of intent filed with the Conservation Commission by Townsend Historical Society. The property is located at 65 Main Street, Assessor's Map 34, Parcel 50. The proposed project is for the installation of a septic system type tank and building addition with associated site grading. Part of the construction will take place within 35 feet of a, of a bordering vegetated wetland. Also, the type tank is proposed less than 10 feet from the 100-year flood as so, parties wishing to speak in support of an opposition to this application may do so at the meeting or in writing prior to the meeting. What's that address? Yeah. 65 Main Street. Is that where they're going to put the, the, uh, the, the church? Is that the yeah, Harbor it's the Church? Is that the Harbor Church? The fire station? No, the Harbor oh, Church. The Harbor Church, I think. 65, no. 65 is the old fire station. 80 is the. Um, the church. Oh, um, oh on, so on the river. The fire side. station. Well, the fire station has wetlands too. Yeah. Oh, okay. sixty-five meters. Yeah, there are hundred. Yeah. There's a channel right there right. that goes yeah. into oh, the river. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I I thought it was the church. Okay. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a fire. It's a fire station. Okay. Yeah, it's channel. So they're putting a tank in. Uh -oh. no, Whatever that is. Tank okay. Tank okay. And uh, is, is the state still renting that? No, that was sold. I believe the. As far as I know, the, the that little fire station across from the Reed House right. is going to be renovated as part of the whole Harbor Village, mm -hmm. and it's going to become oh. a museum, <laughs> a fire truck, old oh. fire truck museum. That, <laughs> but, but that's my understanding from attending some of the hi historical yeah. society, yeah. which I thought was a really neat idea. Yeah, yeah that's cute. Yeah, that's yeah, that's nice. Um, so okay, mm -hmm. here's another one. Um, Town of Townsend Conservation Commission, pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Townsend Wetlands Bylaw, the Townsend Conservation Commission will hold a work session on Wednesday, February 14th. By the way, that's Valentine's I Day. Know. Yeah, we all know. I can't. I can't believe they're doing a meeting. But okay, and it's also it's also Ash Wednesday. Is it? Oh, yes. Yes. This, yes, this year. <laughs> during the seven during the seven fifty five p.m. meeting, the work session will be held virtually via Zoom meeting and in person at town hall on a request for determination of ability filed with the Conservation Commission by Nashua River Watershed Association. The property is located at Zero Riverbank Terrace and Zero Turnpike Road. Assessor's Map 51, Parcel 39, and Assessor's Map 18, Parcel 27. The proposed project is to plant around 120 native bare root trees or shrub seedlings along the bank of the Swanicook River 
behind the farmers exchange. All work would take place in the riverfront area, land subject to flooding and in NHESP priority habitat of rare species. Parties wish to speak in support of or in opposition to this application may do so at the meeting or in writing prior to the meeting. Oh, one more. <laughs> Town, <laughs> Town, this is a bad day for Andrew to be gone. Town of Townsend Conservation Commission uh, legal notice pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Towns and Wetlands Bylaw, the Towns and Conservation Commission will hold a work session on Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. During the 7.25 p.m. meeting, the work session will be held virtually via Zoom meeting and in person at Town Hall on a request for determination of applicability filed with the Conservation Commission by Fred, Fred, Fredap Realty Trust. The property is located at 97 Main Street, Assessor's Map 34, Parcel 38-1. The proposed project is for, for the removal or replacement of a parking area with new asphalt, removal of overgrown vegetation and invasive species around 20 feet from building around the sides and rear of the building, demolition of an existing four by 12 foot dilapidated structure. Work is within 100 feet of a perennial stream in a wetland buffer zone. Parties wishing to speak in support of and opposition to this application may do so at the meeting or in, right, or in writing prior to the meeting. So that's the property right next to the church where the old uh, sweet ice cream was, right? What, this one? The yeah. last one? 97 Main Street? 97. I'm not sure what I 97 think is. Right adjacent to the ch church, there's asphalt there, uh -huh. and they're demolishing a building that used to be an ice cream shop. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, okay. I, I okay. never saw, I never knew the ice cream there, and I've been in town for 47 years. That building, oh. that building has been there. But I never oh, ice cream. Okay. No, you oh, should hot ice cream. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I used to ride my bike over there. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, conservation's been really busy. <laughs> They're gonna have yeah. a busy night that night. I know. There's no, there's no gonna be any Valentine's date night that night. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For them anyway. Uh, so, uh, Beth. Okay, you can sign these if you want while I'm doing my thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, the administrative report for February 12th, um, in terms of applications and pre-filed applications, um, 27 Scales Lane is still um, pending. The stormwater management permit request for certificate of completion. Um, a letter was sent to the owner summarizing the last appointment on January 8th with the owner. Um, so that letter was sent 249 251 Main Street. The applicant came to the last meeting um, with a request for a uh, waiver. Land use did reach out to her and explain that a application for site plan review was required. Um, so we expect that she will do that. Um, my question for the board is, how did you want to answer that request? She had asked for a waiver of a engineered site plan. Would you feel comfortable with that or not? And I will convey that. Okay. No. As, oh, is this for the uh, honeydew, yeah. honey lamb? Honey yeah, farm. the Honeyland Farm. Oh, Honeyland Farm. Yeah, uh, the, the, the UPS store. That yeah, remember she came in with the site. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess we need that. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 well, I, wait a minute. Let's see. I'm trying sure. to read. Because remember, she's walking yeah, but you, the store in, and then the, it, it says, it I me. think the bylaw <laughs> says she needs an additional um, eight parking spaces, which right. not going to happen. It doesn't fit right. the bylaw, and you need to have the engineer plan to tell you whether or not you can waive it. Right. I don't see how we can waive it without having her do a site plan. I mean, yeah. we, oh, we required that. that of others. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay. Like so that, that's, that yeah. hospital. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I think we need to be consistent, and I agree that okay. we need that. Yes, we need to be consistent. It, we cannot be uh, right. pick and choose, and it, it is what it is, especially yep. when you ask for a waiver. Yeah. 
Okay. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and convey that. I just wanted to double check because I know at the meeting it wasn't clear and I just want to be clear. So we are going, I will uh, follow up and let the applicant know or the owner know um, that that request was not um, approved. Um, so as far as interdepartmental approvals, there We're are- We're not uh, even building. supposed to answer if she doesn't have an application and she doesn't okay. have an application. So, Correct. you yeah. know- I just wanted to, um, you know, help her along the permitting process. Yeah. So as I was, you know, so as part of the application. So in, um, in interdepartmental approvals, there were um, a couple of building permits reviewed and approved. 80 Main Street, um, I it was approved with a comment. The planning board respectfully requests an opportunity to review and provide comment on a proposed parking plan that's required for this project. I'm not sure if that will happen or not, but I thought I would put it in there because they're, um, they're quite a few, the parking is going to be a bit of a problem over there. <laughs> oh yeah, for the UPS store? No, no, for uh, 80 Main Street. Which one is that? That's, That's a... the church. They're converting it. Yeah, okay. there's no way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That... So the building commissioner did uh, determine that um, the application has been submitted under the Dover Amendment. Are you familiar with that? No. Basically it allows nonprofit educational um, exemptions. Exemptions. Oh, okay. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, wasn't where it was always used as a church, and then the new use is going to be a museum. Is that it? And uh, uh, I believe most. It's, I, I believe it's going to be like a welcoming center. I think right. it will, so yeah, it's yeah, a change yeah. of use. So you yeah. have to do. Yeah, that. it's going to be an event education kind of thing. Yeah. So um, the um, so the building. But is it's a, still um, nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. It's a historical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So okay. I, I just uh, added that in so that in case the board would have an opportunity, I'm not sure what will happen, but that all, you know, we'll see. So 540 Main Street, installation of a complete wet pipe sprinkler system was approved. Six Warner Road, they're building an addition with the full bath on the left side of the house with an unfinished basement. 94 Fitchburg Road is the age restricted development. Right. That's already under um, construction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yes, that yes. building permit was uh, reviewed and approved, and um, I I just added the following comment to the building permit to kind of tie everything in through the building department. I asked for the um, I mentioned the planning board granted an age restricted development site plan review special permit, and the conservation agent issued a minor stormwater management permit for this project. They are both found in the attachments, which is in permalink. Um, it is anticipated that the developer will adhere to the conditions set forth in both permits during construction and that these permits will be reviewed prior to issuance of certificate of occupancy. I added that comment. So in terms of site visits and compliance, um, uh, most of the stormwater management permits are up to date. We are waiting on a few in inspection reports, but the winter time is generally slower. Mm -hmm. So I have been reaching out and, and um, other land use staff, we reach out now and again to ask for those reports. So um, that's, that's going on. We have, um, let's see, oh, uh, 108, 110, 112 West Meadow Road. The board will recall that you issued the, or you approved the scenic roads out there. That um, owner has three lots. I don't know if you remember um, yeah. the, the the stone wall that he oh, removed. Yeah. Oh yeah, crossing three lots. Meadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's three separate openings. There's three lots, and um, he's been he's going to be submitting a major stormwater management permit to cover those three lots. Wow. In the meantime, he has submitted a stabilization plan to the land use staff for the winter. And then um, that, so that's forthcoming. You should be okay. seeing another permit from him soon. And then in terms of miscellaneous, um, the final concepts and technical report memo came in from MRPC on the 119.13 intersection. Did yeah, you get I, saw a the, I saw the maps for that. I, that's when I said I was a little bit confused from the maps. Yeah. They had a lot of, lot of lines and 
Yeah. Did you get to see it? No, I didn't okay. see it. Okay. Well, if you come into the office, I'll pull it up on the computer and you can look at it if you want and, right. and look it over. So that um, they do have an additional piece to that. We had sent comments from the Board of Selectmen and they didn't incorporate those. So there is going to be one more iteration um, mm -hmm. incorporating the Board of Selectmen's comments on their on their work. Uh, district local technical assistance call for proposals that's open and the first round is due March 6. Land use staff is thinking um, and, and considering different projects. I mentioned this last time. Of course, MBA, MBTA communities is high on the list. Uh, grant assistance to implement the intersection changes that uh, for 119 and 13. Um, there can be map making, GIS services, um, possibly the open space and recreation plan if we find there's more coming out of the requirements, you know, for for that report. So okay. we can go use DLTA for any technical assistance that oh, okay. like we need to, we potentially yeah. could use for that. Yeah. Um, but the we need the application in. Make sure that gets in. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, that has to be approved they by the board. They meet on the selectmen. 7th. They meet yeah, on so the 7th. Yeah, we have to have a meeting with the board of selectmen. So, yeah, that's highly important. Um, unified planning work program. So the project that I uh, we had mentioned before was submitted with a number of letters of support, including uh, Margaret Scarsdale. So Repres Representative Scarsdale um, wrote a letter of of um, support for that too. I think I circulated that to you, didn't I? I don't think so. Make sure. Okay. Again, the town, town annual election is April 22nd. Um, the regulations, as I mentioned earlier, are in the town council review bin. The election's on the 22nd? Yeah. Yeah, April 22nd is well, the... I have nomination papers if anybody wants to sign them. Oh, okay, we well, got to get yeah. a resident. <laughs> I will when I get I'm home. resident here. Yeah, I'll sign it for you. Just go to Dunkin' Donuts on Saturday, you know. <laughs> I know. Not only that, Roger Raposa <laughs> asked me to be nominated for a member on his board. He's the... Uh, Parks and cemetery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's where I'm. That's my final. Well, I figured I'll get. I'll be. I'll get. A, I, if I join, I'll get a plot, right? <laughs> well, I have, my plot's already over there. I know where. I'm on. I'm going to be on row nine. <laughs> okay, I hope I be on row seven. Yeah, a lot of the other things I already mentioned. Okay, so, are these um, different towns yeah. or these. There's two different yeah. ones. I think the rest of it has oh, already been okay. mentioned earlier two in the different. meeting. So oh, okay. that was April twenty second. Yeah, for the town election, and right. I believe the papers are due back. Do you have the date on that? March first. Okay. I, okay. think. Yeah, or I think it's a little later. Yeah, I'll March double check. Fourth. I actually took it out of this report, so it's in an old one. But yeah, everything else. Do you I think know if um, other people have? T do you know who? What papers have been taken out anyway? Besides I was only I was only notified that Robert had taken papers out. So, if anybody else is is willing to, yeah. And when I went, they asked me if it was for the two year one or the five year. Five year. I said two. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Here you go. Is that what you had before? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, um, Robert, is that what you had before? But, for his term before? I don't remember. What, my previous term? I've yeah. only been on two years. Two years. Yeah. 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 He took yeah. a two term Thank you. year before. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. You got all of them, right? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Since you live in Pepple, so you don't cause a bus fire? No. Was that today? No, it was a couple of weeks ago. I was stuck in traffic. You know where they oh. park all the school buses? Oh, we probably should right on 119. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, um, that's that is our next meeting. Then is our meeting on the fourth or the eleventh? So I have the next meeting as February 26th. Oh. And then following that is um, March 11th, and then March 25th. So um, there is a A&R on the agenda for February 26th, and I'll be sending that out to the board. Okay. Um, North End Road. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right. So what dates do we have? I have um, February 26th. March 11th and what? February. February. February 26th is our next meeting. Yep. 26th. Yep. And then March 11th and then March 25th. March 11th. I have assessors that day too. So 6.30 on the 11th. And the 25th, I will not yes. be here. Okay. Um, I don't even know. I'll have to get back to you because I will be with my daughter. And I think it's, I think that's the weekend of her ALS event. Okay. Um, okay, great. In there. <clears throat> so do we, have, do we have anything planned on that one? March 25th? Yeah. Do you have anything booked yet on that one? Nope. Okay. I'll let you know if uh, I I can or I cannot attend because okay, whatever well, you need, what I'll do. Just to give you the heads up, March is going to be a challenge for me because we have two out-of-state things that are going on. Okay. Okay. Um, so travel potential. Right. Okay. And I'm not sure what the dates are. Okay. When you okay. get a chance, just let me know. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, if you could if you could possibly be available on the eleventh in case we don't have quorum on the twenty fifth. We'll try to get as much done on the eleventh that we can. Eleventh? Yeah, I should still be here. Yeah. And then the following one will be a big meeting on April first. Yeah. That will be public hearings. Yep. Okay. okay, very good. Now, do you want to keep the 8th, um, or should I delete that? Cancel it. Of, of April? 8th of April? Yeah, because that was the original date. date. Right. Um, I'm okay with keeping it. Okay, yep. Um, April 8th. Yeah, yeah. so we'll first. just... And the first. So we'll just see how much we can, you know, what if we have to continue something from yeah. the, you know, the meeting on the first, we'll have time to do it on the eighth. Um, yeah. And I have no idea what will be after the 15th. So let's see what we can get done in the beginning of the month, if you don't mind. And then yeah. you said that the, our annual meeting is the 7th. May 7th. Yeah. Meeting, right. Yeah. May 7th, Tuesday. Okay. And then the warrant closes on March 1st, which I'll make sure we are all set on the warrant okay. articles. Yeah. And then um, on the 11th, okay, April 1st, but on the 11th, you will have, uh, if you would please, on your on our agenda, to review the recommendations of land use. Yeah. For by the 26th. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Okay. Probably, yeah, the 11th would be good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, master plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds great. Ah, oh, okay. Um, all right, then we have that set. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn at 8.04 p.m. And you can make note that Michael um, did leave our meeting at 6.45. Thank you. The I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.04 p.m. I'll second that. Okay. No objections. I'll call us adjourned. Um, thank you so much. Hartley. You are most welcome. Okay, everyone. Stay safe. Have a good, Have night. A good night. Thank you. Oh, you're going to miss all the snow. I know. Happy Valentine's Day, girls. Yeah, I'll Happy be thinking Day. of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. There Thank was you. something. Oh, um, Beth, we're yeah. unrecorded, but I have a question about how long was Allison here? I mean, didn't she just take over like no